Welcome back to Fair's Fair! Today, I'll be talking about movies destined to fail and what a studio might do with them. This was prompted by a comment I received from The Last to Know, where they wanted to know some things about cancelling or releasing a movie, or show that the studio knows is going to fail. So I'm going to talk about some of the reasons they might choose one or the other, and some info about each option. Now, there is an important bit of information I should lead with here. I am not currently personally involved in the industry, and the information I'm offering here comes from other sources from other people, and from my own research. If you know some additional information, or I've gotten something egregiously wrong, please let me know in the comments, and I encourage other viewers to check for additional info below. All with a reasonable pinch of salt, this is the internet after all. But before we hit our main topic, there are some things you absolutely need to know about movie budgets. What a movie cost to make is almost never what they actually need to break even. In fact, most movies need to make double their budget to be considered breaking even, and much more than that to be considered a success. There's of course the cost of making the actual movie, but there are the costs of advertising which can be huge, even as much as the movie cost in the first place. The box office money also doesn't even all go to the studio. The theater and the leads of the movie take a cut. They're also going to have to pay back bank loans, because contrary to popular belief, most movie studios don't just sit there on the profits. They pay them out to stockholders and CEOs. So to make that $300 million movie, they have to take out loans that they are eventually expected to pay back with interest. The decision of whether or not to release a disaster into theaters is a complex, often lose-lose choice. Like trying to make it home with diarrhea and you know you won't make it. It's about weighing your options. Frankly, the first and foremost question is, can it even be released? If you already know you aren't making your investment back, the movie isn't done, and they still need more money to finish filming, then it's time to cut your losses. The bank wants their money back, and spending another two months and another ten million dollars is just digging you a deeper hole with no promise of gold at the bottom. All those resources could be put to use on something that will actually make money. But you also have to consider if releasing it as is will make anything. For you see, if you cancel it, then you get to write the whole thing off on your taxes, which can alleviate a lot of the losses. So even if it's all done but the crying, it's possible that it's just so amazingly terrible that you'd still be financially better off killing the whole project. The alternative being reshoots which means more cost, more loans, more time, more accrued interest. And at least one more stockholder wondering if they should sue you out of your position. Though to be fair, it's unlikely that someone who worked on the movie or was in charge of getting it made would choose to kill it. That's like admitting you messed up and it becomes a sunken loss fallacy, where you decide that it has to at least do well enough to cover your losses. A similar mentality to the people who support narcissists in media that I mentioned in my other video. It's easy easier to just blame a fickle fanbase than it is to admit that you fucked up royally. That's why when you see projects getting killed, it's usually by someone who is new being brought in to try and turn the company around, like with DC. I'll be honest though, I don't actually know how much tax credit you get back if you cancel a movie. But I'd wager that larger movies are released more often than smaller ones because it's not all that much and they'd make more back by releasing what they have. Again, assuming they have something that can be released. A hundreds of million dollar movie, like The Flash, is likely to make some money off of the diehard fans and was mostly done by the time they decided to reboot the DC Cinematic Universe. Aquaman was likely in its end stretch and, again, was so costly that they might as well drop it in the hopes that Jason Momoa's raw charisma and physique could rake in enough to slow the bleeding. Though it's also possible that people working on the movie are a factor. While the fans being upset that a movie got canned may be annoying, they'll come back for the next one. They always do. The people making it, however, might not. Burning bridges with directors is a touchy decision. You're a movie company and the only way out of the hole you dug is the shovel that you got in with, making a movie. 
The other end of that coin is when people who made it are the problem. Disney had to delay and reshoot the whole Snow White remake because Rachel Zegler couldn't stop punching holes in the ship before Disney could sell the three-hour tour tickets. I doubt Disney cares if the remake is good. It just has to make a profit, which it might have through the nostalgia crowd. But with their lead actor guaranteeing that it will flop, they had to reshoot it more faithfully. Or at least appear to. In actuality, they'll probably do the bare minimum to convince people that this isn't going to suck. Live action remakes are never better than the original, yet still make money. It just needs to be the cash grab that it always was. The issue on Snow White was PR. If you look at how Zegler acts now versus how she acted before... The cartoon was made 85 years ago, and therefore it's extremely dated when it comes to the ideas of women being in roles of power. I just mean that it's no longer 1937. Her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. Yeah. <laughs> weird, weird. All of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. And now for something completely different. The cartoon's so beloved. It's like a monumental moment in film history. Yeah. It was like the first feature length cartoon yeah. movie to the point where it, it won honorary Oscars and yeah. all of these amazing things that, that happened for that film are the reason that you and I really get to sit here today because yes. it made Disney what it is. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear she was pulled aside by the PR team and carefully threatened, er, uh, educated on how to act in the interviews. They still need to change some things to convince people that, no, really, this version is worth your money. But otherwise, they just need to win back enough credit that the starving nostalgia fan is going to crawl to this movie in the hopes that not all the magic in the original has been ground out of Disney's exhaust port. Continuing on our topic, don't forget that space and time are sort of the same thing, and time is money. So the theater has to also believe that your movie will make enough to justify the screens that they're showing it on. The Marvels played to theaters with single-digit audiences, not exactly a profit machine. The goodwill of the theaters and the audience can be harmed if you release failure after failure like Star Wars. So the last question that a studio needs to ask themselves is, are we about to alter the canon down a path of no return, or make such an ass of ourselves that our name becomes synonymous with bad movie? And if the answer's yes, odds are they'd rather just kill it and tank the loss. That way, at the very least, they can have a chance of winning in the future. Disney has been cancelling and reworking movies in both Star Wars and Marvel in a desperate attempt to pull out of the dive they've started. Some, like Boba Fett, were reworked from a movie into a show in an attempt to save their sinking streaming platform. Though for the streaming platform and the two IPs, the damage might already be done. So, if you've decided to kill the movie or show to cut your losses, what happens to it? It's buried, put deep down in a vault of shame like the Disney-owned porn vault, and maybe Walt Disney's head. As for the question I wasn't sure about at the time of the original comment, will anyone try to resurrect the cancelled movie later? No. Even if the rights change hands, no. If it was so bad or unfinished that they decide to outright kill it, then there's no way they'd gamble on it later. Not to mention if they do release it later, then the government is going to want them to pay back that tax credit they got for claiming it as a loss. I dare you to try to convince a room of shareholders that it's a smart idea to pay the government a bunch of money to try to resurrect a movie that still requires reworking and was abandoned as such a bad idea it was better to never show to anyone. After you've convinced them that this wasn't a joke and not to defenestrate you, let us know how they worded their fuck you and how long you were given to clean out your office. These things don't always come up while in production though. She-Hulk was cancelled in between seasons, with the warnings not so much of writing on the walls as it was the wall being made almost entirely out of comically large warning signs. It became abundantly clear that it wasn't going to make its budget back, nor draw in new subscribers to Disney+, Plus, with the cast and crew openly mocking the fans. It's almost amazing that they managed to spend so much on a show that was so bad. The lead actress would go on to claim that they were simply too high budget. And while that may be true, that's not the whole story. Disney doesn't care how much it cost. It was a commentary without nuance, a comedy that wasn't funny, had characters without character. It was a show no one watched and a product that didn't sell. They can try and reword that however they want, but that is why they were cancelled. 
With all of the flops of shows and Disney Plus hemorrhaging money so hard that the shareholders are literally suing Disney, a lot of shows are likely getting the chop in between seasons. Though the major waste in my mind was that they got the lead actress from Orphan Black where she played seven or so very different versions of herself, put her in a role with two forms, and then had her act the same in both forms. A massive waste of her talents. But did Disney learn? Well, they're still making a Ray trilogy, so who knows. Kind of seems like a no, and history would suggest that it's a no. So, who knows? I suppose the only concrete evidence that we could get from here is whether or not they can accurately determine if there is any profit in the Ray trilogy, and what shows they decide to greenlight or allow to be released from here on. I hope that was as informative to you as researching it was to me. If you're in the industry and can offer more detail or corrections, please do in the comments below. As you like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Though I didn't really say anything that would make anyone entertainingly angry, so I'll add this at the end just so they have something. The Last Jedi was terrible and it was Ryan Johnson's fault. If that makes you mad, then you too can go down to the comments to be entertainingly angry.